It's a great day to be an Ascender. Hi, everybody. Jeff Holbrook here, Director of Admissions. Really appreciate you coming on to our uh, series of webinars. Today, we have an opportunity to talk about our postgraduate program with Mr. Joe Kukitz. Mr. Kukitz, how are you doing today? How are you, sir? I'm Happy to be great. here. <laughs> awesome. Really appreciate you joining us. Uh, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, make sure you focus on your time here at IMG Academy. Sure. I joined IMG Academy in 2011 from working in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, when I joined up in 2011, it was with the Campus Life Department, and I was overseeing the postgrad students at that time as well. Um, after a couple of years of focusing on the postgrads there, I joined the leadership team for uh, management and for two years managed the department as a whole um, outside of the PGs. And once the postgraduate program and the uh, and IMG Academy, seeing the special qualities of the program, solidified the PG program with the creation of my current position now. All right. So what exactly is a postgrad program? I think there's some people out there that aren't even sure what we're talking about. Well, postgrad program deals with the year, the gap year between your high school graduation and your enrollment in full time into college. Uh, my role in that now is to oversee all our postgraduate students to give the parents a point of contact for the for campus to manage the students to make sure that they are getting and receiving all the the resources that we have on campus for them. All right, so we understand what a PG year is. Uh, can you tell us why it's a good option for some student athletes? Sure, the PG year is a good option for, for most student athletes that are willing to make the investment due to getting a year ahead on the incoming freshman class that they would compete against in the next year, the following admission cycle. Right. Um, they, they're going to gain a year of physical maturity, you yeah. know, men and women. They will be working out in a professional environment. They'll be getting their education. Um, you know, our PG college program, they'll be working with professors to transition to know what to expect in their college enrollment full time, you know, after their year at IMG. The recruit, they'll get an extra year of recruiting that's going to help against, um, especially now, um, the, the bottleneck that was created, uh, you know, this year with the NCAA and and just the lack of recruitment availability at the end of this year. So they will be getting a year back, a full year, where students that are just heading right to, col to college right now for full-time admission probably lost a little bit of that traction. Awesome. And then, um, you know, this is an odd year, obviously, with some seniors having their uh, spring seasons cut short or maybe some of their recruiting uh, delayed. Uh, how do you foresee you know, these situations or circumstances changing uh, the postgrad outlook for us? I think for the spring sports, it's going to be, it's going to have a major impact because they missed their season this year, yeah. unfortunately. But fortunately, we, they have the ability to make it up by entering our program. The spring sports will have full schedules. They'll be able to get all the film they missed during their high school year and um, that recruiting process will just continue from where from where it was last year with the, the coaches and staff that we have available. Now, some people get a little worried about postgrads and how it might impact any kind of NCAA eligibility. Um, talk to us really quick about that. Sure. There's no NCAA eligibility that would be taken away by joining the program. Our PG College program, which we'll talk about in a minute, it only allows you to be a non-degree part-time student where that once you enroll full time is when you get into your eligibility, which doesn't happen here. Um, there's one circumstance with Division One tennis where you can only where you can only participate in sport for six months after graduation. And then it, that doesn't eat into your eligibility. But everything else, um, it, it doesn't pose any threat. Yeah, and even tennis, that's only a, a competition piece. Those students could still sure. do some training. They yeah, could do training course. in semester. Yeah, that second six months. Yeah. Um, you started to go into our academic options. We have a couple of uh, very different academic options here at IMG Academy. Can you talk about both of those? Yeah. Well, first off, we have our PG College program and we're partnered with University of South Florida. University of South Florida comes onto our campus. They work in our classrooms with our students. The ratio generally is 
is uh, one professor for 20 students or less. Generally, it's less. Um, but that gives the student an opportunity to be uh, learning how to build communication with professors in college. That's obviously an important. They work closely with them so that they're, they're navigating the college classroom, the college experience, what they have to do online and things like that. So when they do enroll full time as a freshman uh, the following year, they're familiar with what with what to expect. And they're they're hitting the ground running where other students, you know, there's a 30 percent drop, 33 percent dropout rate that probably was a little surprised by what they need to do. So our postgrad program is really building up that confidence um, in getting some credits under their belt as well. Yeah, USF. It's sorry to interrupt you, but you, when you talk about credits, I know a lot of people get excited. So it, what's an approximate number of uh, college credits some of these kids can uh, walk out with? Well, depending on what the goal is, the most they could take out of here is nine credits per semester, which would give them 18 total. Now, most students take two classes, which would give them six credits per semester, 12 total. But again, that's giving you that's going to take away some gen eds that you would need next year anyways as a freshman. So you have the ability to do that in a smaller environment, you know, especially in a class like college algebra, where, you know, students tend to have issues with math. The majority of students are going to be taking that college algebra, where sometimes at, you know, major universities, you might be in class with, let's say, two to 300 people, where here you're working with 22 students in a in a professor that we have that's going to really get you through and help you guide through that to make sure that you finish it successfully. You know, sticking with this college idea, um, I've noticed some great relationships between those professors and those students. Can you talk a little bit about uh, both the relationships and also the professors themselves that work with us? Yeah, for our um, American history and English, we have PhDs, Dr. Nelson and Dr. Ramsey, who teach for um, for the college algebra and business calc, uh, which is second semester. Uh, Ms. Granstead, who works in college and high school teaching um, and for our classical foundations class in the fall. And then right now, currently, it's Roman history. In the spring, we have uh, Professor John Previs, who's a classical historian. He's a regular lecture at the Smithsonian. Um, I went to see him at D.C. Yeah. In, in Washington, D.C. Um, he's published a book about Hannibal, speaks all around the country with Steve Forbes and things like that. So um, we have had published, you know, highly acclaimed um, educators from USF that we're lucky to have that builds relationships in these small size classrooms um, to help, again, to help those students with being comfortable. That's that's the whole thing. Being successful, finding you know, if, if students are maybe afraid to speak in class, they're co they're um, getting them out of that routine to make sure that they're able to participate and feel comfortable, you know, with those good relationships. Um, yeah. I know that Professor Previs is out at the baseball games all the time and yeah. and uh, is 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 uh, in communication with his students to guide them, you know, not just in class but just in, in life in general. Awesome. All right, now let's go back to the other option, the post grad high school. Talk to us a little bit about what that means. Yeah, so the postgrad high school program, that gives the students a couple of different options. If you are speaking and being actively recruited with Ivy League schools, they may, they may tell you and dictate, hey, look, if you, you know, we want you uh, for next year, we want you to go to IMG as a postgrad, and we need you in a certain number of AP classes to get through, make sure you maintain your grades, and then you'll be on the team. The following year. The postgrad high school program also helps students that might need an extra year of a math and an English to make yeah. sure they, they build their skills. Now that isn't a very common track. It's certainly available. Those The NCAA can use one of those high school credits for um, their core for eligibility purposes. Yeah. And then the other option is uh, specifically international students are not allowed to take the college, so they are in the high school piece. Yeah, correct. And they will be in four classes minimum. Um, and generally speaking, they have no problem with that. I mean, they really succeed. The international students show their ability to do American work in the American system for any university that they're applying to. So it really works out for them as well. I mean, it just shows, it just shows another level of what they can accomplish. 
is it a year that the group can work on improving test scores, whether that be SAT, ACT, as well as uh, TOEFL? Correct. So they can work on, like you said, they can work on SAT, ACT. We have um, that tutoring offered in the evening for group sessions. We also have one-on-one tutoring available, but they can take that test through the entire year. Um, And it's encouraged to do so. I wouldn't be coming here thinking that I'm not going to take that test again. That's an important piece of the recruiting process. um, And and it just needs done. Yeah, no doubt that that can open a lot of doors, whether it is the TOEFL or the, you know, college board programs. Uh, Let's talk about a student who would rather not do academics during that post-grad year. Um, What kind of options do we have available for there? We, we do have that option. However, College admissions is so competitive that you really, that I, you know, I personally never recommend that unless you're you're already recruited, you're already you're already placed on a team, you're admitted to the school, and they know you're not taking class. But when you finish up, there might be a chance that you need admission to college to be on the team. You are showing the school that you had a year to do it and didn't or weren't able to do it. Now there are certain circumstances where that might come up but for the most part in the majority of our kids they the academic programs either one should definitely be be the, the route to go sure you know of course we have some outliers we have those kids who sure. you know, projected nba draft picks then absolutely yeah, it certainly makes sense for them um do some of those kids end up getting uh, extra sport training if they are sport only Generally, no. I mean, our sports, you know, we're, we're in a block schedule um, compared to D1 colleges. So sport time specifically for postgrads, maybe morning or maybe the afternoon. There's nothing in between um, anything like that. We have um, a schedule that's based on making sure that you're getting the work in that you need to when it's scheduled already. That's why after that initial training set as well is, you know, you need to rest. I mean, LeBron, ask LeBron James. He'll tell you sleeping, I think, 12 to 13 hours a day. Um, he knows what, what rest means. And that's what we have to think about as well here with our training. Absolutely. Um, you know, each sport is a little bit different in the postcard. We've already talked a little bit about tennis has some regulations, et cetera. Can you go through a few of the uh, sports and maybe how uh, the postcard program is different for them? Sure. So baseball and basketball, they are PG specific sports. So they have their own teams. They compete against junior against colleges. You know, any team that can play wants to play them, they can play them. But their teammates are strictly post grad. For football, which um, is excellent this year, is the first time that we've added games to to their playing schedule. In the past, when um, they would train all year. Now, granted, we place, you know, there's students that trained here, had our exposure, had our coaching and training, and they ended up in Penn State, Miami, Toledo, things like this. So it was very successful. But now with the, you know, it's only going to be advantageous for them to be able to play four games on a fall schedule. But those games will be mixed in with upperclassmen. They will not be postgrad specific teams um, for their teammates. And all the other sports as well will be mixed in with upperclassmen. Yeah, that'll certainly be an extra boost for those football players specifically, you know, to get those to commit, uh, knowing that they were training. Uh, granted, it was against, you know, the top um, talent in the nation. They knew that it was still only training. Now that they have a handful of games to look forward to, get some extra game film, uh, that'll be crucial. Um, you know, yeah, speaking of game forward. film and, and what it's going to do for these kids, can you talk about uh, college placement at the post grad level? Yeah, so in, in my role, like I said, I will be the point person for families, for students. I'll be meeting with students um, once, at least at a minimum, once every two weeks, just to make sure to manage their day. What are they doing? Are, am I, are they using their resources around campus? Did you talk to your coaches about college placement? Did you talk to your professors, your, your high school teachers? Did you meet with our college counseling staff? Which they each each sport has their own individual college counselor who will help them with the college application process, getting lists together, you know, searching schools and things like that. So every student will have their own specific counselor to help them along the process, as well as myself, their coaches, and anyone else around campus. But yeah. they'll be specifically for them. Yeah, that part is important to know that you know by having a sports specific college counselor who works closely with the baseball program or the football program that really helps each student athlete 
uh, get to know sort of their level of expectations and how to best approach, um, you know, their college search. That part works out. Yeah. I'll go back to, you know, also the, what you talked about is how you check on them. And I'll just speak from experience watching you interact with these kids in the hallway kids i say you know these young adults these college <laughs> kids yeah what i love about it is you treat them like college students um you know they may be walking the halls with other high school kids but there's certainly a difference in the way you handle them and i'm sure they appreciate it because i certainly do in the way i see you interact yeah of course i mean sometimes we have students come in that think that because they're in a boarding boarding school high school um, situation that they're relegated to that treatment and behavior. Well, we have professional athletes, Olympic athletes yeah. that work out here all the time, along with middle school kids in the in the weight in the performance center. They don't just because they're working out with a with a middle schooler doesn't mean that they level out their their <laughs> effort. So that's what you know we're talking about. These guys got is these guys is to make sure you know they're here to work. Yet the aesthetics, who they're working out with, it almost doesn't even matter. Make sure you're a good teammate. Make sure you're a good student. And make sure that you you have the blinders on and that you're here to work. Well, you know, on top of that, a lot of kids will talk a little bit about the social life. It's certainly no college uh, atmosphere <laughs> here. But, you know, how do you respond to someone who's asking you about our social piece of the post-grad program? Well, we do have what we call a structured independence. They're going to be learning when they need to study. They need to do it on their own. I mean, we will have me as a as a level of instructors. Yeah. People are going to be on their, you know, looking over their shoulder to make sure they're getting their done. Their parents as well. Yeah. Um, but they do have time. Um, there, there is some downtime. And it's, you know, what you're going to do with that time. For someone that asked me about the social piece for a post-grad student, it's, you know, you want to come down here with the mentality that it's business. Yeah. This isn't fun time to go to the beach. It's fun. It's time to play 40 game baseball games in the spring yeah. to get ready for college placement. Yes, there are some events that we put on for the student athletes um, yeah. with the seniors and postgrads together. Students are allowed to sign out at certain times. But at the same time, you know, it's a big investment for the student themselves and the parents. And we understand that, which is why, you know, our message consistently is, you know, this is this is business. And let's, you know, have some fun here and there. But, you know, yeah. for, it, it's not a college party. Uh, so to your point, you talk about uh, hitting the beach, uh, other opportunities. Are the kids invited to some traditional high school uh, type events that we have? Yeah, we do have a uh, beach day and things like that. Um, you know, they're not every weekend. I mean, you know, that yeah. time is for rest and recovery, studying. But we do have those those events that come up, and they're definitely more than welcome to join. Awesome. Talk to us a little bit about some of the success stories in the post-grad program you've seen over the years. Just a handful. Well, Don't go crazy. Well, I can say generally I think might be better that, you know, we've placed students in military academies in the Ivy, in the Ivy schools, we have placed students in the NBA. We've placed students in the Power Five conferences. We place students as, students in you know highly regarded Division three schools. You know, a lot yeah. of people forget three. about Division three. I mean, Division three has fantastic academic institutions that are just as hard to play at as yeah. Division schools. So, um, you know, Columbia, Navy. Um, you know, Jesse Edwards, we had a student that came in internationally and showed that he could really do the work and ends up working hard and gets into Syracuse and has playing time his first year in there. So there's there there are students in, in a wide range yeah. uh, of, of, of instances where, you know, it's just success all around the board. Absolutely. Anything else you'd like to add to this conversation for those uh, prospective families viewing out there? Sure. I mean, it's a highly successful program and it's what you put into it that you're going to get out of it. If you don't buy into our performance center training, you you still change 30 percent, but you're leaving 70 percent on the table. If you buy in all the way, you're walking out of here, a young man or woman, completely different than when you walked in and your head and shoulders above any incoming freshman from any, you know, from anywhere in the country, yeah. you know, competing against in, in of, as a freshman in college. So, you know, we're looking forward to having you. It's a successful program. If you have any other questions, I mean, obviously, you know, reach out to us and we'll take care of it. 
Outstanding. Joe, it's a pleasure to work with you every day. Really have an <laughs> outstanding uh, relationship in the admissions and the post-grad world. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions on the admissions process, financial aid, or campus life, stay tuned to this site for more webinars coming soon. Or reach out today by calling 1-866-300-4538 or visit imgacademy.com to request more information. Thank you very much for watching. Go Senders!